Give us some examples of what are some of the things that you and your company have automated. And I'd love to hear like kind of the evolution of it because automation is one of those things, you know, it depends on who you are, but it sounds like you got a different, you got a team that thrives and enjoys this idea of let's solve these problems. But we've heard, we have heard nightmare stories in the past of people saying, Hey, they're not certain. Hey, there's a lot of exceptions. I joke at my company. I always say, Hey, I don't want to manage exceptions. Let's manage to the standard and allow the exceptions to figure it out. So I don't want to like say we have to build for the exceptions. That sounds, that sounds terrible, right? How did you start embarking on this journey? What were some of the things that you first started deciding to automate? And then of course, kind of give us a flavor for how you do and shoot what you choose to automate today. Yeah. No, I think good question. It Again, it's not because automation and because I'm a technologist by heart too. So engineer by domain, how I grew up. So naturally, I love to build things. And so I, it's not about automation is a technology cool thing that I want to do. We start everything with what outcomes do we want to achieve and what process do we want to streamline and how does the business process or workflows work and how do we really remove the friction. And where does automation come into play? So that's the approach we take. And there are several tools that we have leveraged, whether you take, whether it's an RPA, intelligent automation, hyper automation, citizenship development, you name it. It differs from area to area. But all how we started is like, you take an example, you have a new employee joining us and there is a set of processes that needs to be done because we we are recruiting big time because we are scaling and growing as a company. And if we're scaling and growing, we can't have the same repeated manual steps of process to onboard an employee because the steps are very same. And can we really streamline that, automate that through one click process so that one, the hiring manager doesn't need to keep relearning the same processes over and over again as they recruit or forget what the processes were and then get panic before a new employee joins. How do we make it streamlined? How do we make that experience seamless? And also for the new employee, we don't want to create anxiety when they're joining us to really figure out, I don't know how all the processes work. I don't know what all tools they use. That should not be their fear. If we are hiring them for a specific role, whether it is in engineering, whether it is in finance, legal, HR, marketing, whatever division it is, we are hiring for your domain expertise, not to get worried about all the tools and processes that you need to know how to use. For me, that's an experience that we need to create seamlessly. Like you don't need to know our recipe of everything, how how things work here. It should be seamless because we were never taught how to install an iPhone or how to start using it or somebody didn't come and teach us. We figured it out. And that's the mindset we have. So we really define what the outcomes we want to drive. From an employee experience standpoint, our goal is what are those actions that employees are taking repeatedly? And what are the five top actions that are pushing where we are getting a lot of service requests or actions or they are requiring human help? How can we continuously automate those things so that they can go for self-help or reach out when it's required on demand rather than waiting for somebody else to respond to those requests? So we are continuously looking at users' behaviors in the way they consume things and how do we remove that friction? We also launched our first universal chatbot as an example. We used to have an IT bot. Now we are expanding elsewhere Like, how do we have a universal chatbot where it's not specifically, oh, this is an IT bot, that's a HR bot, this is a finance bot or a travel bot. Like, we don't want to have 10 bots. So the goal is, how do we have one universal bot for an employee that they can go and ask to get whatever they need? instantaneously. It's a buddy that they have that they can really look into. That's the kind of automation that we are doing behind the scenes for the experiences we want to drive. For a company the size of Autodesk, the one thing that we've learned from every company or CIO that's been on this show, and of course, Mission is a small company and we have an, a lot of software's steps and process. So then I would imagine at a company like Autodesk, it's like 10 times more. And there's this idea that you, you know, we used to think of automation as building between two technologies. Now it's like layered technologies where like this action in one tool is going to cause an action in another and it's going to cause downstream effects into multiple tools to automate that process as simple as possible. When you think for yourself, what does it take? How do you evaluate which things to invest in? Because you mentioned before you start at the outcome. Hey, I want, for example, you said earlier, faster onboarding. So then you're going to look at all the steps in between that make it slow and say, what can we, what can we automate here? When you think about it that way, I mean, it makes complete sense, but at the same time, you're probably also getting requests. Like people are trying to also ask you to, Hey, 
oh gosh, could you fix this for me? How do you evaluate what, what you're going to work on? Because when those inbound requests come, do you try to map them back to goals? Do you try to map them back to just who it is? How do you try to map out and what are you going to choose to invest your time and energy in trying to automate for that process? That's a great question, Albert. That's a typical tricky challenge because we only have X amount of capacity and how many can you really solve? See, first is outcomes, the next is impact. When we when we do ruthless prioritization in Autodesk, what we go through is, when I finish achieving these outcomes, how many users does this impact? If it is going to be impacting all employee base in the way this works, or a particular person of employees, or if it is just going to impact me and my dog, then you know, you know what? You just get over it and figure out a manual process because we can't get to it. This is where the prioritization takes first about outcomes, next impact. How broad is it going to impact? What is the user base? Then then prioritize it. And in some cases, right, more and more as we are scaling as a company and the maturity in automation, we are also getting to a stage where I don't need to have my team automated for others. This is where the whole reskilling and up-leveling and upskilling is happening in several divisions across the company where we are enabling teams to self-automate within their own portfolio what they can and consume it on the platform. I call it citizen automation, citizen development and citizen automation, where we have we are not in the mindset of, no, I'm in the mindset of how do I enable them, not do the work for them? How do I create platforms that they can consume to be effective and productive, not get needing to, okay, get back in queue, take a token, wait for your turn. Nobody has patience again. I agree. Citizen development is one of those, th- those terms that has been used quite a bit, let's say the last five years or maybe less. I can tell you from interviewing different CIOs and CTOs at different companies that it's not everywhere yet. It's definitely not everywhere yet. Well, how do you go about promoting that culture? Because that's something that is amazingly powerful, right? Which is this autonomous thinking, this idea that this is my department and or my team. This is what we do. We have identified a way to possibly make our jobs easier so that we can do more of the critical work, like you said, like the repetitive tasks, like how do I get this out of my job? And you're saying, hey, you've now educated or taught me the person that can just do it, implement it. How did you go about building that culture, that capability? Because I think that is something that many CIOs want to know. I think you you touched on a critical word through that question is the culture. And everything, whatever we do, connects back to our top goals. This is one thing our CEO and CEO staff are very, very particular about. Like we clearly have to define goals and KPIs, what we want to achieve. And we are still a company of that size, even though we are considered as a big company, we all feel like every one of us can move the needle and create an impact. Whatever we do is connected to the top line goals. I think People are not worried about, oh, if I do this, what will I do? We don't have that fear, especially when you're in hyper growth mode. You are really all thinking about scaling and moving fast, but at the same time, not compromising on quality and experience. And when you're in a software company with full of engineers, I think they would love this kind of open setup. And we are also been recruiting a lot of early career talent coming into the pool where they want to be self-served. They don't want to be given, okay, you do this, do this way. No more run books work for them. They're like, no, no, enable me. I will figure out how to do it. And so we are also adapting big time. I think culture plays a big role. And as long as all of your employees see the overall vision and where we are headed and why everybody has a role on to create that impact, I think that fear factor will not be there. Fear of being left out will not be there. And people will be supporting and helping each other so that we can keep moving forward together. Based on that answer, I was, you know, it sounds for sure like other companies might be hampered with bureaucracy. It sounds like you don't have that problem. It's like, hey, we are encouraging people to take control of this and and, and build towards the future. Yeah, I think and it's also self-realization. We had a legacy, but we are a different company now where we are continuously need to continuously provide value to our customers and to retain and, and to show that in the subscription model. So we realize that having that self-realization is an important aspect of where we need to go. When I think about what you've said in some of the earlier conversation, also, you mentioned certain technologies that you've invested in. Things have changed to make it easier to do this. What are you investing in? You mentioned RPA earlier. What are you investing in or what are you really excited about 
seeing inside your organization that's going to help this automated future because RPA is one of the ones that is obviously a big, but you know, it's a category that didn't exist five, six years. <laughs> it feels like it didn't exist right now. It's huge. Give us an idea where you're investing your time, energy, and where do you see technologies and categories that are most promising to help automate the future? We are investing across the board in technology, people, and process, I would say, because in some cases, it's more up-leveling of our talent to really leverage some of these tools. And the technology also is changing at a rapid pace than before. So we have been bringing in new tools, testing it out, what makes sense, and if it doesn't make sense, we are changing tools behind the scenes that the user should not even know. As an example, I told you, we had a bot and we just launched a universal bot. Behind the scenes, there's a technology change that happened, but the users don't know. For them, it's a capability that existed and today it's coming from a different technology behind the scenes. So that's something that we have to be very mindful of when we are building because the technology is changing at such rapid pace. We are always thinking about capabilities that we are giving to our employees, as an example, or even customers. They should not know or we should not expect them to learn that particular technology because if we are doing it right we are hiding that complexity they are only leveraging and consuming the capability not a technology and so we have been very very particular about giving that experience layer where they don't need to know about a particular technology and so we have been investing whether it's rpa chatbots or just automation workflow automations or automations within a particular applications, whether it is within Salesforce or whether it is across different landscape, whatever we have, some within the applications we are trying to automate, some connecting multiple applications, the workflows. There are different technologies that we are investing in. Our automation series is brought to you by Salesforce Platform and Dreamforce 2022. We don't want you to miss out on the world's largest software conference with a healthy dose of magic. So log in to salesforce.com slash plus for more automation-focused sessions. 